Welcome to Tuesdays at 2. I'm your host, RJ. In this show, we take a new ingredient every week. It's going to be an ingredient you can find at your local supermarket, and we're going to teach you how to make a wonderful recipe with it. So stick around and check out the recipe. Without any further ado, what I'm going to do is I'm going to eat a bit of oil in our pot. Um, so I have a Swiss Diamond HD nonstick um, saucepan, uh, nope, soup pot over here. Um, Nothing's going to stick to the bottom of this as we cook. Everything's still going to crisp up nicely. I think you're really going to enjoy how this goes. So what we're going to do is I am taking three leeks. You guys, I've already cut these, cleaned these. Um, I harp on this a lot. Leeks are very, very, very dirty. Uh, most vegetables that are that come from a bulb, so onions, almost all onions, uh, celeries, uh, carrots don't matter. You eat, the, you eat the root, right? You peel everything off. But anything that grows through the ground as you eat it, right? So you're eating the bulb as well as the greens. Um, they're usually extremely dirty because as much as they say they wash them at the store, uh, don't believe them because they just they, they don't take them apart. You got to cut them in half. You got to peel them apart. You got to do that, or else you're going to be eating sand. You'll definitely feel it. Guys, I said to strip this, but you know what? Let's go ahead and chunk it. Um, there you go. Good. That's nice and hot already. The reason being is we are going to end up blending it smooth. So the smaller you start with, the easier that process is going to be. Um, if you guys don't know, I worked in restaurants for a really long time, and most of the recipes that I bring you are either recipes that I used to make in the restaurants or an iteration thereof. Uh, this is a, a iteration of my leek soup, um, and really so green pea soup. When you think of spring peas, you think of pea soup, uh, or I do anyway, excuse me, or you think of frozen peas and a good, you know, a good ice pack when you hurt yourself. It's the other thing I think of. So anyway. Leeks are a, in the onion family. They're really good uh, roasted off and charred. They are sweet. They bring a liveliness to any soup. Um, so between that and the spring peas, which are going to be really crisp and fresh, even though they're frozen, they're going to bring a really crisp and fresh um, flavor to the dish. See, guys, I don't know if you can see that. There's dirt on that still. Just throw those away or, or brush them. You know, if you guys are close to a sink, unfortunately, our studio doesn't have a sink in it. So in order for me to wash them, I've got to take them out of the shot. But, <clears throat> excuse me, if you see one that's dirty, just wash it. You don't want that sand, not in your soup, not in anything you're eating um, or dirt, really, but it feels like sand in your mouth. Anyway, springs are good. Uh, uh, leeks are going to make this dish come alive. You're going to see. Um, all right, so the next thing I'm going to do is take two stalks of celery. We're going to cut the tops off, cut the bottoms off. Um, again with these make sure they're washed I washed them earlier that's why they're off the stock if you see any dirts in here you know get your finger in there get your towel in there um, and get it taken care of all right same thing right so we're just gonna we're just gonna slice these and give them a rough chop again everything is going to go through if you have a food processor it'll go through a food processor I'm gonna do it with an immersion blender um, still go ahead and help those tools out give them a nice small size a nice smaller chop for you. Uh, if you go too small, you're going to cook too fast. You don't necessarily want that. Guys, I didn't bring any tools over either. Are there some tongs and uh, maybe like a, a spoon or some kind of stirring utensil over there? <clears throat> uh, works. Is there another pair of tongs? Because I'll probably need another one. Perfect. Thank you. All right. But wait, before we continue, do me a favor, click that like button, subscribe to us if you haven't already, make sure you've hit the bell so you get our notifications, and comment down below. I know you don't like everything I do, so let me hear it. Now, back to the recipe. Anyway, so we have got everything going there. It's been cooking. Uh, next up, we are going to stir in six cups of peas. Yeah, six cups of shelled peas. Again, these were frozen. Um, if you have fresh ones, by all means, use the fresh ones. I think the frozen ones are going to be just fine for this meal. Um, we're going to be, there's so many other flavors in this thing. You're not going to know the difference. Um, and really, peas is one of those. Peas and corn, those are the two that, if you have to go with a frozen one, you're not going to tell much of a difference in your dish um, for the most part. I mean, if you just like to eat the peas out of the shell, then obviously you'll tell yourself a little bit of a difference because you're not popping them out of the shell. But other than that, okay, guys. So we are going to yep, stir those up. We're pouring in four cups of chicken broth.
whatever chicken broth is best for you guys. Um, we just use, you know, full power chicken broth. Uh, if you like sodium free, by all means, you may have to add a dash or two more salt. If you're staying away from salt, this recipe actually has got so much flavor in it, you're probably okay. Um, can you run to the kitchen and find me the 24 centimeter cover for this thing as well, please? Uh, I, I washed it earlier because I was making everybody lunch. Yep, all right, so we're just gonna pull this on high, uh, bring it up to a boil. Once it gets to a boil, what we're gonna do is we'll drop it down to a simmer um, and let it sit for about 15 minutes. In the meantime, let's switch gears. Let's go over to our second meal. Um, so the other one, like I told you, is a seared salmon with a green pea, bacon, mint, and shallot sauce. Um, again, I don't have the shallots. We're gonna use spring peas or spring onions. Uh, it's gonna be delicious all the same. So. And guys, I brought nothing. Can you halfway fill it up with water? <laughs> so first off, what we're going to do is we are going to blanch those peas off. Hey, uh, if you'll also bring a, a bowl and the strainer, that'd be awesome. Thanks. So we're waiting for that water. I just need a little bit. Um, I probably should cover, cover my mic on it, y'all. Is that loud? Sorry, guys. I'm not trying to blow out your computer speakers. Okay, well, in the meantime... We can start. Oh no, because I need the piece. <laughs> All right, so here, like I told you, we are getting this up to a boil. Perfect. Throw it right on there if you don't mind. Thank you. All right, guys, so what I've got going on here, I should have started this earlier. That's my fault. We're going to cover that, let that heat up as quickly as it can. What I want to do is I want to blanch these peas off. So I have another two cups of peas for a different one. Um, frozen peas are ready to eat. However, I always feel that they're undercooked the way that they are. That's why you always. That's why I always put them in something. Usually, uh, I use fried or I use uh, frozen peas religiously for fried rice. I will not get uh, fresh peas. It's way too much work. Uh, the fried rice is perfect with frozen peas. Uh, I think that this meal is going to be the exact same. But what we want to do is we want to blanch them off. Okay, which really just means flash, bring them up temperature really quickly. Flash them just to make sure that they're good and warm and they've kind of brought out all their bright greens and, and have that, that shell just tenderized just a bit, okay? So this is coming along. What I'm doing here, I don't need this to be up to a boil. I just need it to be uh, warm if not hot. So we are there. You can see some bubbles inside. I'm just going to toss the peas in for about a minute, minute and a half. Not a really long time. What I want to do is I just kind of want to bring up the light, liven them up a little bit. Okay. So next what I'm going to do is I'm going to strain those peas off. And I'm going to reserve just a few of them. Um, I'll keep a few of them in one of these bowls somewhere. I'll find a bowl. Uh, I got it. I don't even know. Um, and then I'm going to put the rest of the peas back in there. Excuse me. Um, did I miss a step? Oh no, I just reverse steps from the way I usually do it. No big deal. All right, yeah, so then I'm gonna put them in there. We'll hit, the, hit them with the emergency immersion blender, um, get them good and uh, good and um, creamed up. We're gonna put salt, pepper in them, pull them off, then we're gonna cook bacon, and we're gonna do the bacon part of the sauce. All right, that's really about all we need there. So we're going to go ahead and carefully drain these. Like I said, I'm going to save about a third of them. Put the rest back in here. Yes, thank you. Move this off to the side. It's not too hot. Um, all right, so we're gonna hook up the immersion blender here. You guys, smash that follow button. So here is a big advancement for me. I got somebody that can shop for us now, so I can bring you better things. That's awesome, although it didn't help me today with timing. Um, it's going to. And then the next thing, if you guys can go ahead and, and hit that follow button, um, hopefully my boss will get me a, uh, a power splitter so I can use two things at one time while they're plugged in. How cool would that be? 
Um, I'm just joking. It is on my Amazon wish list. Somebody will buy it for me for Christmas. So we're just going to take this and we're going to smash these peas up. Um, we're going to use a touch of that water, actually, just to get it where it needs to go. Boop. You don't want a lot. We're not looking to make a real wet sauce here. Um, you just need, need a little water to make this thing do what it's supposed to do. You'll need that in a blender, too, if you use a food processor as opposed to a, a stand-up mixer or a mix blender. So what we're doing is we're just mashing up these peas. We're basically making mushy peas. Um, if you have another preferred method to do that, by all means, feel free to do that. Um, this way works well for me. So I'm not making it into like a creamy, creamy, creamy sauce. Uh, not by any stretch of the imagination. I just want these to kind of be beat up so they will look good on the plate. You'll see what I'm talking about in just a few minutes. Now I'm going to hit these with salt and pepper. Um... Throw the lid on it, keep it warm, just move it to the side and keep them warm. The good thing about these Swiss diamond pans is the heat retention on these are so good that just by putting the lid on here, these things are going to stay warm for, I don't know, not hot, but they'll stay warm for 10, 15 minutes, which is really all we need to do here. All right. Put this on here, move this to the side, plug this back in so that I can do multiple things. Perfect. All right. So next up, we're going to put this pan on here. This is a Swiss Diamond um, 12 and a half inch nonstick pan. So again, it's got the um, it's got the nonstick coating on it, the diamond infused nonstick coating. Um, and what that's going to help do is it helps pretty much nothing stick to it. Go back and check out some of my videos, some of the SD videos or uh, HD videos. I don't know how we have them titled. Go back and look at those and kind of see what this cooker can do. So I'll show, I show off on that, you know, the, the classic egg not sticking, um, burn some sugar in it, and I do a couple more practical things, people, things that people actually want to do. Um, while everybody wants to cook an egg and not have it stick, you can do that in stainless. Um, you know, what you can't do in stainless is cook a, uh, cook like a tomato based sauce and let it cook all day long and then wash it off with just a paper towel. Can't do that. Oh, I have one in my pocket. Look at that. All right. So what I'm doing now is I am cooking off four pieces of bacon. I'm going to render all the fat off of these. I'm going to get them relatively crispy. Uh, we'll pour off almost all the grease, but not all of it. And then what we'll do is we will add back our hard peas, our mushy peas. Um, and interfuse all that as the sauce. Finally, after that, what we'll do is we will cook our salmon. So guys, the store only had one piece of salmon somehow, so I'm going to actually offset that with shrimp. I'm going to cook this. We'll cut it when it's done. I'll plate it as two plates still. So everything I do here, I try to make at least two servings. Um, if you're at home by yourself and you cook for one, cut everything in half, not a big deal. This soup is going to be four servings. However, uh, as with any soup, Cook a lot more. Put it in a plastic bag. Freeze it. Um, all right, guys. Here, check this out. Now that we've got the steam rolling, you can see that there is steam coming out of the side of the pan. That's kind of how it's designed. You're not supposed to have a you know a, uh, a tight seal because you'll end up having a vacuum issue. However, there's not a ton of steam coming out of this. So if I open this up, now you can see maybe even turn it out. You can see even more. There is a ton of steam coming out of that. So now there's a ton of steam coming out. You're letting out all the moisture, um, which is good if that's what you're going for. What I actually want here is I want to turn this down to a simmer. Um, I'm going to use this to stir it real fast. Let's see. I want to put that in something boiling and sterilize it just a touch. Uh, again, nothing we've done here until we got to here. Use any meat, but make sure that you keep your meat and your vegetables and everything separate. As you can see, this is just a meat tray. Uh, I used my hands to put that bacon in. Bacon's already pre cured. Did you know you can eat bacon right out of the pack? I wouldn't. It's kind of gross. A lot chewy, but it is, uh, is doable. What we'll do here is I'll use some tongs. Uh, and, and not touch it and move that out of the way. By all means, guys, wash your hands at every step. It will help again with foodborne food foodborne illnesses. There we go. Just slow down. Pick things up. Um, and really, that's the key. First step, don't get sick. Second step, eat good food. All right. So 
guys with this one as i said i'm just gonna let this simmer till the end we'll go back to the soup at the end uh i'll make it how it needs to be let's focus on this meal um because i'm letting all of those flavors come together although i just thought about it i don't think i salt and peppered anything so let's take care of that salt a bar let's hit this with a little salt too pepper all right cool all right so like i said we are just going to cook down this bacon um i'm cooking it over medium high heat there's no sense in throwing it on super high um you know bacon i'm sure you guys all have your preferred way of cooking bacon to me if you cook bacon on high what happens is you crisp it up way too fast the fat doesn't render out of it, so you have really crispy pieces in it, um, offset by fat that's not uh, it's not rendered down far enough, so it's super chewy. Excuse me. Some people like it like that, by all means, uh, cook it the way you like it. This one I actually want to get crisp throughout, because we're going to cut it up, excuse me, or crumble it up, um, and throw it into the dish, so we want it to be crispy. We don't want little chewy, fatty pieces of bacon. To me, most meats, um, other than, I don't know, it's grilled stuff, uh, slower, lower, you're gonna end up with a better result, right? Now, that being said, don't put bacon in the oven at, you know, at 250 and wait four hours because it's probably just gonna be a fall apart mess. You're not gonna want that. Guys, this cookware, uh, I think I've mentioned it. It's made in Switzerland. All of our Swiss Diamond uh, HD cookware all of our non-stick cookware, made in Switzerland, okay? So it is European made, uh, European design, shipped to our Charlotte warehouse here where I'm at uh, for distribution throughout the United States, Canada, and Mexico. So we do everything here for the Americas right here in Charlotte, North Carolina. Um, and the only stop between, the only stop before, uh, before us is Switzerland where all the things are made. Um, the, the, the handle here is ergonomic. It's stay cool on the cooktop, um, obviously if you put this stuff in the oven, it's going to heat up to 500 degrees. 500 degrees is not cool. Okay. So in the oven, this is hot on the cool on the cooktop. It's designed to stay cool, be able to touch, but like with everything, you know, give it a little feel, give it a little feel before you grab it. Okay. Uh, we don't want to burn ourselves. Um, I've mentioned the perfectly flat base. That's because of the cast aluminum. We're able to cast this into any shape that we want. Um, and when you use cast aluminum versus spun or, um, pressed, it stays that way so it's in its natural shape again because it has been cast there as opposed to a flat sheet that gets pushed um, or pulled or stretched or whatever and it wants to go back to where it was so it's going to a couple of things it's going to not spin on you um, it's going to sit on your glass top or your induction top or your uh, really any top right it's going to sit evenly as evenly as your stove is um, Let's see. Oh, it's great for the, the heat distribution since it's perfectly flat and it has a thick cast aluminum base. It has a fantastic heat distribution. You're not going to have hot spots in your pan until you get to the really big ones and you're purposely trying to get a hot spot in it. Uh, we have a double burner griddle. If you turn one side on, the other side off, you are going to have a heat gradient. Uh, but that is the design of that pan. Um, you know, for that, you want to do sausage and eggs on one side, pancakes on the other. Pancakes, you don't cook over a raging hot fire um, because you'll end up burning the side before it cooks out. Let's see, what else? Um, these are suitable for all cooktops except for induction. That being said, we have an induction line. So if you have an induction cooktop and um, if you have an induction cooktop and you're looking for Swiss Diamond cookware, make sure that your title of the product says induction, okay? We have 95% uh, of the products we have in non-induction, we have induction. The other 5% are roasting pans um, and big double burner griddles which either don't need an induction bottom or don't make sense uh, cost-wise to, to make that. So again, if you're using induction, that's what, that's what I'm cooking on here. These are induction cooktops. Uh, we have that 15% off those items as well. Um, let's see, what else we got? Anything else? Let me just see a little notes here since it's been so long. We touched on the handle. Oh, guys, oven safe. Everything, uh, all Swiss Diamond HD products, all the fry pans and saucepans and stock pots and casserole dishes and anything lids included you can go in the oven up to 500 degrees um no problem so you you know you can braise your meat on the countertop or on the cooktop throw your veggies in throw your stock in throw it in the oven come back see it in four hours pull it out with two uh hot pads 
put it on a tray, put it on your table, serve right out of it. Um, so it really is a one pot, do it all type of situation um, for a lot of for a lot of the Swiss diamond stock pots. Or I'm sorry, a lot of the Swiss diamond pans in general. Um, go back. I've done a couple of one pot uh, like pastas and meals. Really good, like to show you the different steps that you can do all in one pan. Uh, you don't have to worry about things sticking. You don't have to worry about doing a hard to glaze on it. Um, scrape it, you know, scraping the back and scraping the stuff on stuff on. Don't have to worry about any of that. Uh, that being said, they do brown, uh, you know, chicken or meat or whatever a lot like a stainless steel pan. Um, so the, you know, excuse me, since they do that, um, you know, you you'll be able to get that that stainless steel uh, stainless steel sear. There we go. It's always a hard one for me um, that you're used to over there. But you don't have to worry so much about the cleaning of it uh, because it's going to clean up a lot easier. Okay, guys. So. We got this bacon here. It is pretty done. So I'm going to pull this off. I'm going to carefully pour this hot liquid into the trash can and hope it doesn't burn. We're safe. Uh, all right, putting that back on here. We saved a little bit of this. Um, come on. So what I'm doing next is I, that's already still hot, right? So I'm going to throw these whole foods in, the ones I saved. I want to just kind of get them browned up just a little bit using that fat. I'm going to take the mushed up peas that I got, also put them in there. Cut. So we're just kind of warming all that through. Uh, what I want to do is I want to get some of that browning off of the pan onto the peas themselves. I'm actually going to use this to keep this whole sauce warm here in a second. Um, we're going to crumble that bacon in. I just want to drain a little bit of extra fat off of it. We'll put that bacon in there. Look, bacon against green. Fantastic, right? Uh, you're going to want to get some of this. This is a really easy recipe. I know you probably saw me pull green peas last week and you're like, ugh, I don't like peas and onions. Like, That's fine. I don't either. Let's not do that. Um, yeah. I didn't let enough fat drain off of those. I'm just going to pull them off here and give them a quick chop. back in there. I just didn't want the big, big pieces of bacon. Bring this back up to heat. I think I'm going to put just a touch of oil in that. Um, I didn't reserve quite enough bacon fat, so touch oil in it just to give it a little bit of browning on this pea sauce here. All right, so next up we've got our salmon. Um, I'm just going to season it with salt. I need more salt. This is what it looks like when you prep. You just pour a bunch of stuff in bowls. Super fun. Welcome to my world. All right, so we're just going to use a bunch of salt on that. Um, we will pepper it in the future. We are not going to pepper it right now. Okay, look. This is now officially the dirty fish tongs. So we'll keep those on that board. Um, yeah, like I said, we're just going to heavily salt it. I'm going to hit it with a touch of red pepper. If you don't like spicy stuff, don't put it on. No big deal. I love spicy stuff. So I'm going to do it. I've been here long enough. I'm going to eat my own food today. What do you think about that? No, I'm just joking, guys. I cook for about everybody in the office. Um, none of this food goes to waste. I know I've been part of... Oh, you know what? This is the one. I'm going to let that cook a little bit longer now. Just to make sure it gets up to 160 since I touched it with that. Um... You guys, I know I've been part of a lot of cooking shows and a lot of cooking shows. Uh, you know, they're cooking the meal three or four times to show you TV magic. And then, unfortunately, a lot of it hits the trash can just because there's not enough people there to eat it. Here, I guarantee you, everything that I make gets eaten by the crew. 
Um, if it doesn't get eaten today, we put it in Tupperware bowls um, and eat it for lunch over the next couple of days. So, anybody before anybody goes down in the comments and yells about us wasting food, doesn't happen. Everything gets eaten. I like to share what I eat with everybody else. Um, so this is kind of my way to be able to do that for you guys. Guys, I am going to uncover that and just let it chill for a minute. Um, I've just got it on warm. It's probably been long enough. Okay, so I'm going to take this again. And we're just going to take our mushy green pea mixture, throw it in this pan or pot, cover it. Again, the idea here is, yeah, 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 I understand all the things. The idea here is just to keep it warm, okay? Um, I need a couple of mint leaves I'm going to mush up and put in there. So about a quarter cup of mint leaves. I don't know. That's about that many. Not a ton. Um, slice them real thin. And then go back and cut them um, or dice them relatively small. So with mint leaves, unless you're doing like a mint julep or a mojito or something, you really don't want a whole mint leaf in your mouth. You take these, just put them in here. Nice. All right, so we're heating this pack up. We're going to put the salmon in there. Um, and we're going to cook that with the shallots. Again, we don't have shallots, so I'm going to use a spring onion. So for this, I just want to use the bulb part. I'm just going to do a quick, small dice on this. We don't actually need any more fat in there, so we're not going to use any oil. We're just going to go straight out these onions. We let them cook for just about 30 seconds or so, um, and then we're going to go in with the uh, with the salmon. All right. So guys, what I'm going to do over here, this soup is ready to get uh, get all mixed up. So we're going to plug back in our mixer here. You guys, this is a perfect example of buy things while they're here. This is one of the best stand mixers I've ever used, or um, uh, immersion blenders I've ever used. This was an item that Swiss Diamond made for a couple of years, and we discontinued it through the, through the pandemic because it was hard to supply parts and everything. Um, I regret right. not buying one for myself. This thing's amazing. So we're going to take this, um, not skin side down. Let's start to clean up a little bit here. Okay, I'm going to take a um, quarter cup of cream. I actually used a little bit more. I got about a half a cup of cream in there. Um, just pour it in, mix it into this mixture. That's going to bring you a little bit of creaminess, obviously. It really brightens up the dish. Um, it makes everything kind of cohesive. Once again, we want a quarter cup of mint leaves in here, um, as well as a hit of Italian seasoning. Um, if you have fresh herbs, I put those in the recipe. It's going to be much better if you can use those. Uh, I did not have the opportunity to get them, so we are going to use some Italian seasoning. It's going to work out just fine. You pop that door open, it turned into a thousand degrees back here when I turned this one open. So. So we're just going to let that chill while we finish this one. Perfect. Let me turn it up just a little bit more. 
So you can see that the Swiss Diamond's already given it some brownness on there, a little bit of char, if you will, which is great. Um, all right, so I'm just going to cut up a little bit of garnish, and then we'll start plating these. So I'm just going to use the rest of the spring onion. In fact, this spring onion I'm going to save for later. I did not need it. Um, so put it down here in a clip. Uh, yep. I'm, so what I've got here is I've got some shrimps. Some shrimp. So like I told you, I was unable to get enough salmon for two. So we're going to do the shrimp mix with that. Bring this up just a bit. I'm going to take the spring onion, take off the outer leaves because it's usually where they're all dirty and a little brown. We want these to be clean and as fresh as possible. So first up, we will plate the the salmon and uh, with the with the bacon pea sauce or the bacon pea spread, if you will. It's more of a side, really. Um, I guess I call it a sauce. It's not necessarily a sauce. We got another minute or so on that salmon, <clears throat> but we can go ahead and start this. Let's take two plates. Why does that one have weight on it? I don't know. Take this, uh, split it right in the middle. Um, guys, if you want to, there's another step you could do here. Um, if you have a food processor, take a little bit of this pea mixture, put it in there with um, a touch of olive oil, a touch of honey, and a touch of coriander, and blend it all the way smooth, right? Get it as smooth as you can get it. Turns it into a nice top sauce for this. Um, I don't have a food processor. That thing wouldn't have done it. So I would have to jump off the screen. So I just wanted to tell you about that. Excuse me. Same thing. Just use that and then just add those ingredients um, and blend it as smooth as you can. And you're, you'll be in business. All right, guys. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this salmon and cut it on a bias here. I'm going to see if it's all the way done. doesn't seem like it is. Yeah. We got, all right. We're pretty close. Just a minute or so on it. A minute or so on put that. This on cool. here as such. I'm gonna put some shrimp around it. Run it in the front or so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Okay. Take a little bit of mint. guys this is a secret ingredient this is olive oil that um this is olive oil that i have that had, was like stored olives in right so this was kamara olive oil just a tiny drizzle on the top we're gonna use it for the soup as well the soup is really where it's gonna stand out but since it's here just put a tiny drizzle on the top it's gonna make this stand out just that much more guys this is a super fresh super healthy dinner um super fresh super healthy dinner again Salmon with a bacon pea sauce. <coughs> Excuse me, I know you hear the word bacon. You think not super healthy. There is not a ton of bacon in that. Um, and look how much peas and everything else there is. Now, on to the soup. I'm most excited about this. This is what I'm eating for lunch. So we've got everything in there. Everything's been mixed up. I'm going to make a mess doing that way. So we're just going to ladle it with that thing in there. Grab a couple bowls. Grab a 
ladle. So guys, this is four servings of soup. The way I always do soup is um, one cup of liquid is one cup, or one cup of liquid is one serving. As long as you're not shoving a ton of bad for you things in there, that's about where you're at. So I've got four cups of chicken broth and a half a cup of um, cream. So I guess technically it's four and a half servings. So you just take some mint on this one as well. Maybe. Take this olive oil again. Kamada, Kamada olive olive oil. I don't suggest cooking with it. It's really strong, but it's fantastic to, to use as a garnish or a finisher. Boom. Just like that. There you go. All right, guys. Just like every week, it is Tuesday at two. It is two fifty-two. Wow, we went for a little long. I am sorry about the crazy start to this we will have our stuff together next week possibly a little bit better probably not um guys let me get that bowl let's pick our ingredient for next week let's go ahead and get this week started off good um make sure that you guys are taking advantage of all of our specials again it is 15 percent off through the end of the year everything we have in stock uh even if it's not in stock on amazon it's in stock in our warehouse we will still give you that 15 percent off to get shipped to you um so make sure you jump on it get there before christmas if you guys are watching this after christmas i hope you had a heck of a new year uh, if you're watching it before christmas or holidays jump into those deals now uh we'll see you soon comment below let me know what you liked or didn't like hit that follow button so you can see me screw up next time uh next time we're going to use prosciutto all right finally getting some fall flavors guys i'm going to knock your socks off i already know what i'm going to make i will see you guys in a week have a fantastic week uh comment down below i'll see you guys what thursday morning and then i'm coming back on saturday uh to to go over some specials with you we'll keep doing that for a while. anyway thanks again thanks for joining us have a great week see you later
Thanks for joining us. We had a lot of fun. Do me a favor, click that like button, click the subscribe button. If you haven't hit the bell, make sure you hit that. Comment down below. Stay tuned. Next week, we're going to bring you another great recipe.